And for God's sake, what is it now? I believe it's a rain dance, so we uh, forgot to turn off the drought. Really? All right, then. Give them some water, for heaven's sake. Really? Yes. Oh. They're parched. It would be my pleasure, sir. God the merciful. for my <laughs> so excited over the teeniest little things. Indeed, haven't we? <laughs> Dancing in a circle. <laughs> Do it again, Jeffrey Spesimore. <laughs> Look at the little loin cloth. Go again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> no. Too precious. Release the plague, Jeffrey. Yeah, man, release the plague! Let's go, go, go! Welcome to Cord Killers, our mission to report the intel from the front lines of the cord cutting revolution so that you, no matter what your beliefs, your creed, your your gender, your political identity, have the information you need to be able to watch what you want, where you want, when you want, on whatever device you want. We're committed to that. I'm Tom Merritt. Yeah, man, even if you're a rich plutocrat playing some kind of AR tabletop game with a, a, a helper named uh, Jeffrey, uh, you don't have to be Professor Elemental. You might be God. You might be appearing on Oat yeah. Studios' latest short uh, that was a wonderful three-minute uh, Twilight Zone-esque vignette about God as a, uh, a, I don't know, a rich plutocratic man-child. It, uh, it was fantastic. Uh, all the stuff they're doing over at Oat Studios is incredible. Speaking of rich and man, joining us today is Justin Robert Young, who I think is the richest friend man that Brian and I have. Yeah, hey, you know you can get a Grandma's Cookies Variety Pack on Prime Day? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much yeah. of a tech story this is, but I certainly am interested in lots of bargains. So, so uh, do you need to disclose anything about that, Justin? Hey, did you see that movie Jason Bourne? Yeah, sure, sure. Get that on Blu-ray on Prime Day. Oh my gosh, Prime Day. When is that again? Wait, is uh, that an uh, NBC Universal movie that I can buy tickets to on Fandango? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I didn't realize. Yeah, my wife works for an Amazon <laughs> subsidiary. Oops. Uh, sorry, FTC. Hi, it's me, Justin Robert Young. I was just doing a joke about selling you other stuff. I really want to sell you my new card game, Action News, at actionnewsgame.com. Kickstarting right now. It might look like we're doing really well, but don't worry. We could still really use your money. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big fan of Action News. I've got a, a, a copy myself, so go check that out. We'll remind you about that at the end of the show. First of all, though, we should kick off our primary target. I decided to shake things up this week, uh, y'all, and uh, and go a clickbait on my introduction. So, Brian, Amazon Ooh. Prime is more popular than cable. Well, Tom, are you are you feeling okay? Do you have a fever? This isn't like you at all. It seems That's like you're That's right, Brian. I don't have sources. I don't need them. Amazon Prime more popular. Okay, it's not yet more popular than cable, but soon, soon Amazon Prime will be more popular. Okay, well, Amazon Prime includes the shipping, not just the television, but here's the actual story. Amazon, <laughs> according to research company Morningstar, is estimated to reach 79 million U.S. households. Uh, and when you compare that to S&P Global Market Intelligence projection that there are about 90 million cable households, it means that by next year, as many people will be able to watch Amazon Prime Video as are able to watch cable television. I love the fact that you pulled a Babe Ruth called shot and then wilted 20% way into the bit. <laughs> That's like, like you, this is how opposed you are to hyperbole and misstatements of fact. I just couldn't keep it going. <laughs> he's, just, he's got too stern a backbone to let such horse, horse and nanny nonsense onto the show. <laughs> If I had a backbone, I would have kept the bit going. But but the fact of the matter is, uh, Amazon Prime being more popular than cable. Or, okay, well, or well, well first of cable, all, to, I, I, it's apples and oranges, right? I mean, right. Netflix has 50.85 million U.S. subs in Q1, but everybody who subscribes to Netflix 
watches Netflix. It's the equivalent of saying the U.S. Postal Service is more popular than the Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Which can like, also deliver packages. Yeah, yes, technically, I guess there's some overlap there, but that's not really, uh, it's not really a binary uh, issue. Um, however, having said all of that, uh, no, Amazon Prime is in no way a substitute for cable, but... I'm not going to deny the momentum of this kind of announcement. We've already seen this with Netflix, and now to have it with the Pepsi to their Coke is, I, I'd say it's it's fairly tremendous information. The fact that we're at a place where for you know less than $10 uh, or less than $15, $20 a month, most Americans can be in a place where between Amazon Prime and Netflix, I will say that you're almost to a cable substituting place, right? Hey, can I... Uh, uh, let me let me play devil's advocate for this nonsense. The cable companies have all, for as long as we have, uh, uh, you know, the last thirty years, have always tried to diversify their offerings to you, right? It's always the triple play, or the you know they want to sell you. It was uh, uh, wired phone lines for a while. Then it was home uh, security. They've always tried to find the reason why once you are done with cable. Right. And now they're trying to keep cable in there because it, the, the people are just switching on to Internet only. They want to keep you giving them money. Amazon has taken that model and built it from the ground up. The first thing that they knew is that, hey, wouldn't you like shipping to be free? Just pay us a lump sum up front. That's where they got me. Now they have continued to diversify on every possible niche level. The reason why you should justify giving them ninety nine dollars a year. That's their bargain. We will make this as sweet of a deal as possible. Just pay us one flat fee. And uh, if you look at where, where they're going, I mean, obviously, all these cable companies are buying up other content factories to keep themselves uh, uh, diverse and, and healthy. But Amazon is building this from the ground up. Yeah. And, and, and to, to bring this back around to what Brian was saying, too, Amazon is – a cable company, right? Like they don't have all your channels and they don't have sports necessarily, but you can add stars. You can add HBO. Like you can add channels. They are trying to get to the point where they can say like pretty much everything you want is going to be available as Amazon prime. That's shipping. That's Kindle. <laughs> you know, like they're just throwing everything at it because they know whatever they do gets you to spend more money with them. And that's exactly what you're right. You're right, Justin. That's what the cable companies were hoping to do with the triple play bundles too. I'll tell you what, man, you're really onto something with this triple play thought because in the old days, it made sense. Uh, you had a cable that delivered uh, cable content to your house. You had a cable that delivered uh, a phone service to your house and you had a cable that delivered, what was the third one in the triple play bundle? It was always phone, inter internet and TV, right? Um, yeah. But and nowadays... Uh, you, you get these weird triple plays like from ATT, like your cellular service, your over the top delivery of cable level content and a security system. That's yeah. three things. Triple play. But and it makes me almost wonder if there's something inherent that all of these companies are selling, which is we will reduce your anxiety to the level we're able to afford for about 100 to $150 a month. And it used to be that your anxiety was, well, what if the phone goes out? What if the internet goes out? What if the cable goes out? We'll reduce your anxiety of all those. But nowadays we're onto luxuries like, well, it seems like I should have cameras everywhere that I could visit and check on my kids at all time, no matter where I am uh, on, a, on a cellular device at all times. Um, I, I don't know. It almost makes me feel like the thing they say they're selling is not really the thing that most people are buying. Uh, and uh, and think about it this way, too. Netflix is HBO. It's an added channel, and people with cable are paying for it. It's way more popular than HBO ever was at 51 million subs in the U.S. Amazon is an extra channel. If you have cable, you pay for it. So these numbers are in addition to cable for a lot of people. Yes, uh, and, and also when Amazon uh, possibly gets into some of the negotiation for things like the NFL – those numbers are going to be very important because they want to be able to sell to uh, the, the commissioners and, and the owners that you are not losing footprint. You are gaining another revenue stream on top of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. They want to say, like, if we had Thursday Night Football, to Amazon Prime, 79 million, million people can turn it on and watch. Turn it on immediately. Uh, they already have yeah. it. As many people as cable, 
can just turn it on and watch it, and and that's what our that that's what our numbers say, and the rest of it we can generate. Uh, who knows whether or not they'd want to do something like that? But I think that there is there is certainly value to those numbers being there, as silly as we can point out that they ultimately are. Now, numbers that are not silly are the votes being counted in our current spoiler in time decision 2017. What are Brian and I going to watch? For spoiler in time after Justified, which we watched the series finale of this week. And we're down to the finals, Brian. Yeah, man. And for those of you guys who don't know, we do a companion show to Cord Killers where we talk about all the content that we finally get to watch, what we want, when we want, on whatever device we want. And we bring you our subjective experiences. And we love having a bunch of current event stuff, but some stuff that is kind of archived, stuff that everybody says, oh, you got to get around to watching whatever. Now that we have finished our third series, we did The Wire, we did The Shield, we did Justified, we had a tournament to figure out what our next one was going to be. What's the re latest results on the tournament, Bryce? Uh, the winner of the sci-fi sectional, Babylon 5 versus Firefly, is Firefly, 62% to 38%. And the winner of the period piece sectional was Deadwood, uh, which was versus Black Sails, 58 to 42, Ooh. a little bit tighter. Hey, yeah. real quick, uh, man, people got a little salty with, uh, with, my, uh, with my words about Babylon 5, which, by the way, I'm sure is a totally fine show. But it's, it's so very, long. very long. It's very, very. Long. It would have been a two-year commitment had that been the winner. We're two not here years. to talk about the past, though. It's Deadwood versus Firefly. Your votes count up until Saturday at noon Eastern time, July fifteenth. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason we're ending this poll a little early is so that Brian and I have a chance to watch the first episode before Monday show. I'll tell you what, man. Firefly I mean, or Deadwood? Brian, I shouldn't. I shouldn't read this text you sent me. That hey, screw everybody who loves Babylon Five. Do, do, you you should read the text I'm sending you now that says shut up shut up shut up WikiLeaks <laughs> <laughs> Babylon Crive is that what uh, <laughs> no dude I gotta tell you man um, as far as visiting a uh, an item from the past I feel good both about revisiting Firefly and revisiting Deadwood um, I, I never finished Deadwood I would love to know how everything ends up and uh, I, I, I think no matter how this ends up we're all gonna Whoa. be winners well you know about Deadwood's ending right well I know it got cancelled <laughs> that's what before I know before it wound up yeah yeah well i'm just saying why don't you go ahead and vote right now <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com slash cord killers you do not have to be a patron of cord killers you do have to have a patreon account to yeah. vote yeah quick uh, quick I, I, quick, I, I, quick side note uh i i really like what patreon's doing where they're adding plenty of ways to interact with the audience patreon is is shifting from a way to simply pay uh, money to your favorite shows and is rapidly becoming kind of a, a, a social media network for people to congregate uh, tribes around certain shows. So if you have stuff that you want to, you know, uh, reach out to us about, make sure to hit us up at patreon.com slash cord killers. Let's talk about how to watch the stuff we like to watch. So uh, we got an email about this story already. Uh, Sony has removed its slim packages from regions that didn't have, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, let me go back. To Sony has raised prices across the United States, Brian. See, Hiking that's it. prices man, across the land. Where, where you been our whole marriage, man? This is all I watch is spice things up in the cord killers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. If you lived in a place that just wasn't lucky enough to have Sony local channels, now they're just jacking up the price. $10. <laughs> Uh, the standard access package is $40 a month. The standard slim package was $30 a month. So essentially all those slim packages are gone, Brian. They're gone, and you have uh, three months after which you must cancel or be upgraded to the new standard packages. And the reason for this is because they're adding local channels in these markets. I got to tell you, I... Um, mm, it, it's not what everyone wants. It probably wasn't what everyone wanted to hear last time we had a similar story and we talked about Netflix raising their price prices and I confess that they could double or triple the price and I probably wouldn't give them up. Uh, now that I've had a taste of PlayStation View, uh, yeah, uh, twenty nine ninety nine seemed like too cheap a bargain. Uh, still totally comfortable at thirty nine ninety nine. So, so you're you're all in on 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 the on on the PlayStation View, huh? It's it's a full on over the top cable. It's everything I enjoyed about having cable. I I e access to the most of the stuff that I wanted live in the moment. DVR capabilities. I absolutely love the fact that I click the button and it just automatically like I don't have to know what time a show is on. I just have to say I like that show, and it's like great. You'll always have it every episode. Don't worry about it. 
Um, thirty nine ninety nine compared to the old cable days seems pretty reasonable. And, right. and, and, and you know, uh, to be honest, even if it got to the cable prices, the fact that it is so easy to cancel and switch is just such a, an amazing turn of events and something that, you know, at the beginning of this show and, and its predecessor, we dared not dream. We did not dream such a beautiful dream. <laughs> but eventually law came to PlayStation View. And now here we are paying thirty nine ninety nine a month. When you start doing the Ian McShane, you really can't stop. Now Ken <laughs> I just I really want to do a Timothy Oliphant back at you, and I just can't muster it. Um, well, we got an email from Tyler in upstate New York who says, Thanks in large part to your show, my wife and I dumped cable and picked up PlayStation View when it launched. Aside from my Roku UI, we've been very happy with View. The core slim package provides the perfect mix of scripts, Turner, and sports networks that we want. I couldn't replicate the about seven channels we watch on any other provider for the cost. Most importantly, I had ability to watch every English Premier League match and the extra time goal zone when multiple games were happening at the same time. Now I feel like my cost savings has been smashed. My view package is going to increase by $10 a month. And as we mentioned last week, the $50 paywall for Premier League pass, which I had access to last season for no additional cost. It hurts more when it's taken away. I also have Netflix, Prime, and will be purchasing HBO now for the season of Game of Thrones. It's possible I'm just a unique case, but it seems to be getting cable level expensive again for the content I want. I'm not sure there is any way to improve my situation with the current offerings, but any thoughts would be greatly appreciated. Will these cost increases in paywalls lead to a next level of cord cutting slash shaving options? I, I, l let me hit you up with this question, Justin. Uh, be, uh, when we first started the show, I genuinely thought that we were on this journey uh, mainly for the price. Uh, the fact that the cable was just obscenely ex expensive and was difficult to access all the stuff you wanted and that piracy was just a, a easier, cheaper alternative. Now that it's been a few years, I've realized that if I had to choose between it being cheap and between it being convenient, oh man, the convenience is what we're paying for. And though there could be a slow creep I don't want to say all the back to cable, all the way back to cable level prices, but but I am addicted to that convenience now. Uh, to to quote Al Swearingen, uh, uh, when when a a, ta a town folk of Deadwood comes in and regales what the prices of things that I won't mention on this show used to cost at his uh, at his establishment, he says very eloquently, "Those were getting to know you prices," <laughs> and that is what. <laughs> we are seeing now this was never about price because the idea that we balked at with cable was you are making me watch all these channels i don't want to watch so allow me to mix and match better what i exactly want what it never accounted for was the idea that okay in a world where you can get everything you want will you pay all the money for it and the answer for, for that is yes like we are getting better flexibility on our packages and surprise surprise we're going to find out that when we actually add up everything that we actually want it's going to be just as expensive uh, you know what? If well and what sony did is remember when they launched they were only in a few markets because of the, those were the only markets that they had local channels available and they wanted to go nationwide to get the jump on Sling TV and the and the others that were to follow. So they did this thing where they said, okay, fine, we will launch in these markets, some of which where we can do ABC on demand, but we can't do ABC live, and we'll give them a $10 discount for the fact that they don't have the broadcast networks. Now they're able to add the broadcast networks. It makes sense that they're going back, but you're always going to have that psychological issue of, well, wait a minute, you're raising my price now. Yeah, meanwhile, the very thing that we love about uh, all of these over-the-top services is uh, I gave, uh, Bryce in the chat brought up an interesting question. He said, how long before we get costlier TV services and we start to fight the introductory prices doing uh, doing e-chicken challenges where it's like you full-on cancel your subscription and you wait for three weeks for the email to pop up saying, oh, did you not like the service? Just kidding, psych. It's twenty nine ninety nine for you. Use special promo code. Don't leave. Yeah, uh, I, and, and that's not what's going on with PS View, but I definitely yet. have seen that from places like DirecTV now. Yeah, I'm just saying yet. I'm, I, I, think, I think that'll become our new challenge in another six to ten months. Here's, here's the only difference, though, is that you're, you're not going to have the exact same 
problem of uh, uh, the retention pool issue that cable companies have because they only lay the cable to certain places. And so if they are losing out on those people, there's not an infinite choice uh, across every uh, possible place to buy their services. I think you will always see introductory prices to, to get people in or comeback prices to get people in, specifically with stuff like DirecTV Now, which has had a real rough time rolling out. But uh, in general, listen, you you want a lot of stuff. If you don't want to pay for that much money, then you need to stop liking the stuff so much. Like there's just always going to be, we are going to find ourselves in a place and we are, if, if not already there, that there's just, I don't know. I also want to watch Premier League and the NHL and the WWE and live sports and everything. And now I can at the click of a mouse. And at the end of the month, the bill's a little high. Wait, and it's you know still what? not as high as a as a non introductory cable price offer though, um, for for most but, people. And and it, the problem is it's getting close. And the other problem is Tyler was in a unique situation where he didn't care about broadcast networks. Most people still do care about them, even if they get over the air. They're like, ah, I don't want to deal with an antenna. I just want it in there. So I mean, I think for Tyler, something like Sling TV is marketed exactly towards him, and he said it didn't used to be price competitive, but maybe it is now with the price increase from View, where you can say, yeah, I don't want local channels. That's an extra package. I don't want it. I just want these packages. And Sling slices and dices things a little, little neater for people until we get so many people using these services that they're trying to steal from each other. I don't think they're going to compete on price. They're going to keep competing on selection and control. So I have a an interesting uh, shift of, uh, of, of paradigm that may happen, a problem that comes with it, and a potential solution. Wouldn't it be interesting is uh, because, Justin, there's nothing wrong with wanting everything. The only problem is that we all want it available at all times we want to know that any moment we could do x y or z or whatever what if culturally we shifted and it's like hey are you watching so and so and then somebody answered like no no no. this month i'm hulu next month i'm going to do netflix i'm going to dive in and do all that stuff or whatever as if as if they were a series of books that you were doing and the problem of course is that once you give your credit card you are locked in and then they have the chance to keep call, calling on it and it's you who are stuck because you don't have the wherewithal to remember to, to disable stuff. Uh, and full disclosure, this is a completely self-serving thing, uh, but but uh, we uh, have a sponsor uh, at, at uh, Modern Rogue called privacy.com. Go to privacy.com slash rogue. Uh, and you can create one-off burner credit cards that expire after your, you set the time, you set the amount. So you sign up and you're like, yeah, I'm subscribed. That's me, whatever. And unlike your regular credit card, where even if the credit card changes, oftentimes they're able to keep billing you. This one, it's like it's dead once it's been burnt for that first $7.99. Yeah. And my, you might check your bank. Not that you shouldn't absolutely go support <laughs> Brian, but you're, my bank does that as well. Like really? I can do that with my bank. So that's a service a lot of banks don't push, but they may have as well. But in, in any case, yeah, you sh you can do stuff like that and keep yourself from forgetting, or you can you can just you know put a reminder down or something. I did it with Stars. I watched American Gods when American Gods was done. I canceled Stars, uh, and and that's going to be the way for non-live events. Now, oh, and, and if you're by the like, way, hey man, I want to be able to catch the news, that's something you kind of have to have ongoing. That's a uh, that's one place where uh Amazon Prime is utterly crushing the competition. The fact that you could subscribe to Stars, to Showtime, to HBO and it just flat out asks, you want to buy just one month or you want it on an ongoing basis? And you just say, I just want 30 days. And then at the end of those 30 days, it's like, hey, let us know if you don't want us to cancel. Okay, you're canceled. Like that being treated like an adult is so valuable to me that it makes it worth it for me to buy it inside of the Amazon ecosystem. Uh, All right, yeah, 100%. Let's, let's move on to talk about what to watch in our segment uh, called Under Surveillance. See, because the shows are under our surveillance because we're watching. Anyway, two more shows have been given the green light for Facebook Live. Returning the Favor features Mike Rowe traveling the country looking for people contributing positively to their community. So the example they gave in the press release is a motorcycle mechanic who helps veterans with PTSD. Uh, and the second Facebook Live green lit is a docu-series covering the Ball family, whose sons Lonzo, Leangelo, and LaMelo are all up-and-coming basketball stars out of Chino Hills High School. 
So these will be distributed on Facebook Live. I assume that they will be watchable after the fact, but these are not like live periscopes. They're not. They're not like. Oh, no, uh, like the not, there's nothing musical. live about them. You're yeah. right. Uh, yeah. Uh, inter interesting where they went. Uh, number one, Mike Rowe, obviously a, a well beloved uh, person who already has a successful Facebook page that he does a lot of stuff on. So you got to figure that he'll already have a built in. Uh, social graph to curry to uh, when when this comes out and the balls who are you know uh, really if you have not paid attention to sports they have been uh, uh, one of the hot topics uh, specifically the father Lavar who is very very overbearing and uh, uh, is is a character in and of himself uh, so it, it'll be it'll be curious in fact if anything I'm almost curious that, that the ball family wasn't able to curry their uh their their current notoriety into something uh, more than Facebook Live, although I'm sure Facebook Live's paying a lot of money. You mean Stefan Curry? It? Oh, stop it! He said he was better than Steph Curry. Uh, he also said Alonzo Ball, who is not a basketball player, said that he was uh, uh could beat Michael Jordan one on one because he's undefeated, never lost. <laughs> Uh, we're going to keep seeing these roll out, these announcements uh, around Facebook Live for the rest of the year. So it'll be interesting to compare these two. You know, on the one hand, Netflix, Amazon Prime. On the other hand, YouTube Red. Where are they all stacking up? These these sound quality, but not but they're not scripted, right? They're they're documentary yeah. style stuff. Yeah, and keep in mind also, like uh, uh, Mike Rowe is such a natural fit for this kind of stuff because he's got uh, you know he's got a decade plus of general goodwill, and he truly is the kind of person wherever he goes, he just falls into easy conversation with anyone. So uh, uh, it makes sense that. Um, if you're looking for a strong base hit for your format, whether in, in this case it happens to be Facebook Live, uh, I am going to say that it was a smart bet to go with Micro. Uh, how about this one? Beat Shazam, which is already airing on Fox. It premiered May 25th, hosted by Jamie Foxx. Now lets you sync gameplay with your app while you're watching no matter when. So you could be watching on demand. You'd be watching on DVR. Uh, Anthony Ha at TechCrunch even got it to work with the YouTube clips from the show. It just hears, because it's Shazam, it hears what you're playing. And it's like, oh, you're at that part in the show. Great. Now you can play along and try to beat Shazam and name in that tune. It's pretty brilliant. Pretty brilliant. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's brilliant because this is a time honored standard uh, type of game show. It's brilliant because everybody gets to play at home, and it's triple brilliant because if your brand name is Shazam, then that's really good when it's in the title of the show. Well, sure, uh, I, and I think the most significant thing to me about this is the fact that they didn't link it just to live. Right? That would that in the yeah. past. That would have been the thing is like you can play along on your Shazam app if you're watching live because we need to push ratings there. Fox is like, you know what? It's fine. We're, we're getting getting numbers from Nielsen that are seven plus. We're getting on demand numbers. Let them watch it wherever they want. We just want them to watch. So you realize somebody out there is going to open up two feeds on two IP addresses, one slightly ahead with the volume turned down so that he could pretend to be playing with the other with the app in hand and pretend and get everything right. You no know, watching it ahead of time. <laughs> and there's no harm to that. Yeah. Like, the only person that will know is that person. That's right. That's right. It's not like there's nationwide leaderboards yeah, or yeah. anything. And, and, and the only loser is him. Oh, he beats uh, himself. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, come on. If he's going to cheat like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he never had a shot. Himself. Himself. Uh, Bojack Horseman returning Netflix with new episodes on September 8th. This is season four. I really? can't believe it, dude. Uh, as a matter of fact, wow. I, I, I think I barely finished season two, just started season three and then fell off. And weirdly, this is one of those moments where just knowing that it's this long lived kind of makes me want to go back and be like, all right, no, I believe it. Let's let's dive in. Yeah. Uh, and a trailer is out for David Simon. Yes, The Wired's David Simon and George Pelicanos's The Deuce, which tells the story of the rise of the New York porn scene starring Maggie Gyllenhaal and James Franco alongside James Franco. He plays twins. Uh, the Deuce comes to HBO September 10th. Uh, Justin, you are almost done with season three of, of Fargo. How do you feel yeah. about the same actor playing two twin brothers? It's like the new thing, right? Isn't there another show that's also doing this? That that's got uh, another another twin, another. Uh, Oakja uh, had it, but they were fraternal twins. Mm. Yeah, they look pretty identical to me. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, well, sort of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, 
it, it, it is a gimmick that is in, in vogue right now, and not to say that the great David Simon would ever do anything that is just uh, uh, trendy for, for the moment, but, you know, listen, uh, uh, HBO's had a real uh, problem with, with doing recent stuff like this, right? Like, vinyl was a real big uh, mm-hmm. trash fire for them. David Simon, uh, obviously, uh, Treme was something that had a following, but wasn't The Wire. It'll be very, very, very interesting to see where this goes, because on one hand, it could be amazing. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, you know, we, 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 in six months, we might be saying, I mean, it was called The Deuce. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's a bold shot to call. So wait, you're saying the headline will be HBO drops The Deuce. I, wh- if and when it is not renewed, uh, that is almost assuredly the headline that bloggers around the world will be breaking their fingers to try to type faster. Um, you know, my problem with this, because the trailer looks great, uh, and and I think Maggie Gyllenhaal and James Franco are fine actors. Uh, I look at this and I'm like, okay, here we go with vinyl again. Here we go with HBO doing a dark period piece again. Like, I... It's what was successful for them with Game of Thrones is Game of Thrones was different and they haven't put out anything that feels different than HBO's other shows. In I a while. disagree. I think Westworld was pretty different. Possibly uh, fair to enough. a fault. Well, I'm forgetting Westworld, uh, but Westworld felt like sci-fi Game of Thrones in some ways to me. Uh, probably because it was literally located next door to Game of Thrones world, <laughs> like like in the the canon of the story. <laughs> it's a fair point. Yeah. Here's here's what I am looking forward to is is that David Simon is taking on something that isn't necessarily like and here is race and class and everything like like clashing t- uh, together. I think sometimes when he is at his most insufferable is when he finds himself the most important and taking on something like. Uh, the small time hoods shooting each other over porn tapes is is uh, a, a cool, more low stakes idea. I think his great writing can uh, can take advantage of. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about what we've actually been watching ourselves. And uh, Justin Robert Young, you are our guest. We'll start with you. What, what's been filling your eyeballs these days? Fargo. That's what Fargo and Doctor Who. I can start with uh, Fargo. I am uh, all the way up to the finale. This was probably the first season of the show that I thought, eh, first couple episodes in, I'm like, eh, I'm into it, but a lot of this feels familiar. I think I'm starting to crack some of the code of what the uh, a Fargo season is, which is fine, you know, because they're, they're taking a huge challenge to redo something uh, uh, each time that they reboot a season. However, man, has it just taken uh taken flight uh it's such an amazing season so far and i'm excited to watch the end of it but what i did watch the end of was doctor who now tom me and you have talked a bunch about mm-hmm. some consternation with doctor who mm-hmm. i have to say this was probably the best season since wherever you want to say tenant's best season was I, I was absolutely in love with this season. I thought that the writing was cohesive and uh, uh, character driven in a way that uh, Moffat's writing very often cannot be. Uh, uh, I, I think it was everything, everything that he has gotten so annoyingly wrong as a showrunner with Doctor Who over the last couple seasons and Sherlock over the last couple seasons, uh, I, I think was rectified here. Uh, such an amazing uh, send off for the characters that we will no longer see and uh, uh, great cameos. Uh, Bill has, is the best companion for me since uh, I mean, geez, whatever. Yeah. I, I think she, she goes into the conversation of, of, of best since the reboot, uh, a fantastic job. And they made me care about the little Britain guy, which who I generally find really annoying. So good on to Dr. Who man rocked and rolled. I, I, I agree with you almost entirely. Uh, I, I think some of the top Matt Smith episodes were better than the top Peter Capaldi episodes of this season, but these were the best Peter Capaldi episodes. And I feel like they finally let Peter Capaldi be Doctor Who. They spent two seasons trying to mess with the Doctor and do something different, and it just never quite worked. Uh, and this time it worked. And I'm with you on Bill. Bill is my second favorite companion since, since the restart of Doctor Who, for sure. She was killer. Yeah, uh, uh, and and just great work by Stephen Moffat. I've given him such crap, uh, and and uh, 
that he he wrote Bill the way I wanted him for somebody who cares so much about uh, uh, about uh, female characters. Uh, Bill was and and uh, non and uh, characters of all different sexualities. Bill was everything that I wanted out of a character uh, like that. Fierce, independent, did not let any of that define her in a way that I think some characters, <laughs> River Song, very <laughs> often kind of uh, uh, fell into this like meow. I'm a lady. Mm, I'll punch you and then I'll kiss you. Look at me. Keep going. I'll I just I want to watch you. this version of the show. This is just the thing. People just get very angry when I when I rip on River Song. But <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. no, Brian, I don't know. Look at my boobs. Oh, don't. I'll kick you in the nuts. I'm smarter <laughs> than you, and I can punch you in the face. I'm River Song. Hey, so uh, 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 brief. Uh, we'll try to tread lightly on spoiler territory, but um, uh, I'm pretty sure you're past the point that I'm talking about in season three of Fargo. Um, there's this moment that is very much an homage to a well-beloved Coen Brothers film that takes place at a bowling Me, alley. A, a Big Lebowski meets Twin Peaks? Yes, yes, that's exactly. Uh, yeah. I loved it, and I and the funny part is, like, they did it once, and I'm like, that was magical and wonderful. And they're like, oh, if you like that, stranger, why don't we do it again? Just literally right now. Let's do it again. And they did, and it was still wonderful. Uh, uh, did, did that get too weird for you, or did you like that? Oh, I I, I was all all in. I, I love it when, what is, is it, Noah Howley? He's the, the showrunner on, yeah. on Fargo and Legion. Uh, I love it when he gets weird. He can always <laughs> get weird for me, and... That was certainly something that that took uh, a bit of a left turn, but uh, and and to be totally honest, it's been a while since I saw some of the stuff earlier in the season where that character connects to. I don't exactly know how he gets to that bowling alley, but hell, I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. Yeah, I don't think we do know, frankly, which is fine, totally fine. Uh, Brian, what have you been watching? Man, busy week. I uh, uh, I think I don't think I'd watch this since last week but uh, but I watched the documentary on Netflix uh, nobody speaks uh, trials of the free press that uh, starts off uh, talking about the Hulk Hogan bankrupting bankrupting Gawker case and then uh, follows a thread that strangely it, you begin very much on the side of like yeah man Gawker needed to go down that was copyrighted material and they didn't they, that wasn't theirs to show it's a good thing that that their side was crushed and then uh, by the end you're like Man, as ugly as they were to watch operate, the world is a less robust place for Gawker not being in it. And they make some very compelling arguments. I, I think it's a really, really good documentary. Um, I also saw, uh, of course, Preacher and Justified we'll talk about in Spoiler in Time. I assume we'll also talk about uh, Spider-Man. And uh, yep. uh, last night I watched Baby Driver. Oh, man, I want to see Baby Driver. It's one of those things where Eileen got to see it at South by Southwest and she loved it, but doesn't really need to see it again. So I need to fit it in my schedule. Uh, so maybe if I see Baby Driver this week, we can talk about it. Spoiler in time. Oh, uh, yeah. Week. And I, I forgot that, Bryce, you you watched Nobody Speak after I, I suggested. After you recommended it on and, Weird and Things it last week. Got you a little wound up. Oh, boy, did it. <laughs> yes. It's great. It's great. We can talk about it during Spoiler in Time. Right on. Uh, yeah, I watched Preacher. I watched Justified. I continued to watch episodes of glow out of order because eileen was watching them and not waiting around for me uh and i really liked what i saw but we watched buffy the vampire slayer during the fireworks last week because we always put on something to keep the dogs uh from from getting too freaked out and the crazy thing about watching buffy the vampire slayer we we're watching episodes from season five was catching myself like there was a scene where these monks are doing a chant and I'm like, okay, so where did those monks come from and where do they tie into the mythology? And then realizing, oh, right, they don't. They're there to set up this plot right now and that's it. And what a relief that was because so many shows that we watch, you have to keep in mind this whole framework that has been built up. And that's great. I love that. But it was a real unexpected relief to be watching a show and just go, that's just a MacGuffin. That's great. That's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, right on, man. All right, let's see what's on the lookout with you, Bryce. Hey, I uh, I, I spent a little bit of time today going and watching uh, the new Netflix adaptation of Castlevania. It's the animated series based on the video game. Uh, it, it seems weird because it, it came out so quickly after it was announced only, what, a few months ago. Uh, but again, then again, this is only four episodes. 
what's what really got me and then I, I realized this right before the show started but what's really weird is the very the first episode is amazing it, the first episode is about Dracula it just comes out and it's like I'm Dracula and instead of being like hey I'm the, it, the there's of, a mysterious force afoot in this here village well, who could it be well, yeah instead of it being like hey I'm the Belmont I'm coming to kill you you're Dracula uh, it's like no uh, Dracula is meets a meets a very strong woman and then lives with her for 20 years and his, his she is his wife um and it, what, so, what so, so dracula begins as the most uh, sympathetic character in the show incredible the first 30 minutes are making dracula really sympathetic and and uh, the, the 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 moment that happened the climax sort of the, the first episode is completely like deserving you you were watching literal hellfire come down and you're like yeah you know what dracula y yeah you know what you you're probably right you you i i agree with you and even the end of that first episode if you if you just gave me the one episode and was like this is it i'd be like this i, I if you told me this was like a a grad student's like a master thesis of animation and i would be like yes this is really sub, uh, um, subversive of the Castlevania lore. It's all about, uh, he, ironically, humanizing Dracula um, and making the Belmonts, who are Dracula hunters, a total footnote. Uh, I'd be like, yeah. And then the uh, I watched the second episode, but I hear it continues in the third and fourth episode. He kind of doesn't ever show up again. It's all about the disgraced Belmont, who is left alive, traveling the world and solving problems as hellfire continues to rain down literally everywhere. So so this is he's he's doing kung fu just just traveling west uh right. trying to redeem his name be and because the Belmonts have been exiled because they used to be the only family that could stop Dracula but now he's this this drunk young young guy who's got moves but he, he's he, what what is so tough is that the very first episode is like yeah Dracula I get it and I don't I don't at the end of the second episode have a good justification for keeping these the humans alive at all. So so you find yourself like, yeah, no, just kill them all. It, it doesn't matter. I would watch that though. <laughs> okay, I, all right. I, I, it's 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 kind of a that but that's and it's not crazy subversive now because that's kind of a trope, but like I I would watch a show about Dracula killing people and keep it short or something but it's I, it, it's kind of weird i definitely say everyone should check out the first episode it's not for kids it's not really not for kids because the end of the, uh, the first episode ends with a very explicit conversation about a goat jeez <laughs> so, okay all right well, we'll leave it that. so but I, uh, I, I, uh, we're, worse than showing my kids okja <laughs> like like don't worry about the f word kids it'll be fine yeah yeah uh, but definitely check out the first episode. Uh, I say check out the first two episodes. It's only four half-hour episodes on Netflix. I, I'll check it out. It's super short, so I couldn't. I, it's it's gonna be an easy an easy pill to swallow if I don't like it. Uh, before the show, you were bringing up. Uh, you said Adi Shankar yeah, brand was he, involved with he's, this. He's an executive producer, and I look at the first episode. Like I mentioned, I could, if you told me this was just a standalone skit someone produced and put on YouTube or something. Uh, that would that would totally make sense. And then remembering all those little uh, sort of like conceptual videos and sort of uh, not pitches, but like single moment stories that Adi, Adi Shankar has put on on YouTube, I I could see this that first episode as exactly one of those. And 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 that's just a weird thing. You don't I don't see that, especially in something like animation where you don't necessarily have a pilot sort of program because animation is so time intensive and expensive. But uh, that's Castlevania on Netflix. Check it out, at least. Um, I, I, man. It's good. Yeah, it's uh, good. I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I think as a primer, if, if you're not interested in diving into that series, at least check mm -hmm. out, uh, go to youtube.com slash Adi Shankar brand. Uh, man, wonderful bootleg universe stuff he's done. He's done these these vignettes with uh, with the Punisher, with the Power Rangers, with with uh, uh, his uh, Truth in Journalism. The one with Venom is just extraordinary. Great, great, awesome takes on all this mm -hmm. stuff. And and he, they're not monetized. And for whatever reason, they let him get away with it. And, and so now we get stuff like this. And Firebrand in the chat is saying it's also written and executive produced by Warren Ellis. I I don't know that name. Do you guys know Warren Ellis? I should. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Famous uh, comic book writer. Okay, well, he wrote part of this. Yeah. 
So there you go. All right, folks. There you go. Four episodes out now on Netflix. If you got something we should be on the lookout for, email us cordkillers at gmail.com. Meanwhile, Brian Brushwood has this to tell you. Yeah, man. I got two things to tell you. Number one, tomorrow, 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 I'm doing an Ask Me Anything with Jason Murphy. Why? Oh, I don't know. Big reason. You should tune in. Wait, only Jason can ask you things or uh, you yeah, and Jason yes, will be answering Yes, things? everyone else can watch it happen. But uh, in, uh, I want to yield the rest of my time to, uh, to, the, to the distinguished gentleman from Oakland, California, Mr. Justin Robert Young. The chair uh, recognizes uh, Justin Robert Young. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all right, so action news. Hi, everybody, it's me, Justin Robert Young. Uh, you might have uh, known that a couple years ago I came out with a card game called The Contender, a game of presidential debate. We kickstarted it, it did really, really well, and uh, uh, we came out with it, and people liked it, and we've come out with expansions. Uh, two years of joy have been uh, gifted to the world thanks to The Contender. Well, we've taken that track record, we reloaded our gun. And we are now back for more. So we're sticking the gun in your face and asking for your money. Uh, go ahead and check it out. ActionNewsGame.com. Whereas the contender was the game of presidential debate using real presidential quotes to argue with your friends. Action News is the game of television news. Taking real news stories from 1960 to the current day. And uh, asking everybody uh, in your little game to... Build the best news stories using sentence fragments. It's effectively timed, competitive refrigerator magnet poetry using real bits of history. I'm very proud of it. Uh, I think it looks amazing. But don't take my word for it. Ask Brian and Tom, who have uh, played the game. Yeah, man, I've got to play with uh, both my wife and daughter. And, you know, three people, you know, once you get to five people, it's pretty easy to have a good time playing just about anything. But with just three people, the strength of the game really shows itself. Uh, the speed of the rounds, the nature of the storytelling. It was fun for a 13-year-old and a couple people slightly older than 13. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I agree. If you liked it all, The Contender, you're going to love Action News. 100% agree. It's sometimes too real what you end up coming up with. <laughs> uh, so uh, go check it out. At uh, what's, the, what's the URL again? Uh, actionnewsgame.com is probably the fastest way to uh, go and find it. Or if you are on Kickstarter, go to kickstarter.com and just uh, search for Action News. It is right there. Uh, we are currently overfunded. Thank you to everybody who has already done it. Uh, but just a few notes. Number one, we have new cards being unlocked at 750 backers. We are very close to that now. So now is the time to spread the word. Hit up Twitter. Hit up Facebook. Uh, call your mom. Let her know that, uh, that this is happening. And if you enjoyed our blue cards in, in the Contender, which is a family-friendly base deck, but you got some curse words and stuff in the blue deck, we now have available the Viewer Discretion Advised Pack for Action News. That'll include some saucier stories and some maybe uh, off-mic curse wordier sentence fragment action cards. It's going to be uh, super, super awesome. So go ahead and check out everything. At, uh, at uh, actionnewsgame.com. Nice. We now take you straight to the front lines. July is here. here. Front lines. Thank we you, I as yes. Time, uh, ah, July dang. is here. <laughs> yeah. right, now get Thank back you, in those trenches. Hey, the U.S. Court of Appeals upheld a 2015, 2015 FCC decision that said cable TV companies now face effective nationwide competition from satellite TV and therefore are free of rate regulation nationwide. Local regulators were allowed to regulate rates for your cable provider if there was no effective competition. And Tom Wheeler's FCC made the decision to say there's effective competition everywhere now, so no local rate regulation, and that's been upheld by the courts. Uh, do you feel like that was the right decision, Tom? I don't know. <laughs> that I have time to explain my nuanced thoughts we, well, on this largely irrelevant decision given the current That's That's kind of where situation. I was headed. I was like, I think 2015 <laughs> called and it almost cares. I know yeah. 2017 doesn't. I mean, the fact that it's doesn't. satellite. Like, satellite provides effective. I'm like, yeah, so sure. does everything else. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile. Oh, j j just look at that wilting uh, graph. Uh, that we showed before. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, the slide whistle going down says they're fine. Charger, 
Meanwhile, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 will be Disney's first 4K HDR Blu-ray release. A leaked document has the tentative release date as August 22nd. Wow, but this has not yet been confirmed. Man, I'm so of two minds over this. Like, I'll bet if I had a big, fancy, highfalutin home theater, I would love, love, love to have a 4K HDR version of this. But also, I don't, so I don't. Uh, Justin, is this just a natural evolution and nobody should raise an eyebrow or what? I don't buy physical media, so uh, I'm with you. Uh, at some point, I hope to have a big old house with a big old theater, and at that point, we'll probably just be downloading uh, 20 gig files uh, over fiber. <laughs> Yeah, man. I, mean, I, I have a I have for the first time last year we bought a 4K capable TV. I just want to stream stuff too. Like every once in a while, I want to own something, but I have to really love it for that to happen. Uh, I, I will say that only once have I enjoyed something in physical media and then tried to enjoy it on streaming media and it didn't hit my expectations. And that was when we watched Utopia. So much of the Channel Four presentation of Utopia. Uh, was in the extraordinary cinematography that we got. Uh, we, a fan sent us a Blu-ray DVD, and I tried to watch season two streamed, and I couldn't. I couldn't handle the lower resolution. I couldn't handle the slightly off color. So but that's um, that's a temporary situation. Like you'll be able to stream it at the same bit rate as Blu-ray. So once that happens, then what? Well, well, then know. then I'm all on board. Yeah, and forget yeah. physical media. I agree. HBO has optioned Nettie Okorafor's World Fantasy Award-winning novel Who Fears Death to be a TV series with George R. Martin attached as executive producer. The novel's about a woman with magical abilities living in a post-apocalyptic Sudan where light-skinned Nuru oppress darker-skinned Okeke people. So, uh, have we all moved beyond the point at which we're going to keep hounding the poor man to write books? Leave maybe, the man alone. Maybe yes. he should just, you know... Make 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 more of make literally anything as close as possible in quality to the Game of Thrones, the TV show. That's fine. It's fine. I mean, honestly, this is not what's keeping George R. R. Martin from finishing a song of ice and fire. Oh. I did. I've, 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 I'm not worried about that at all. George R. R. Martin put his name on the project and may or may not have uh, 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 sauntered into a pitch meeting at some point yeah. to talk about no, how and, much and he loved it. And Nnedi Okorafor has said, I met George R. R. Martin a few years ago. He's been a mentor to me. My guess is she wanted him attached so that he could be in the, he could get on a call every once in a while and go, no, Nettie's right. <laughs> you know, don't no, do that. It, it, look where it got greenlit. HBO. Uh, George R. R. Martin could come in and say, my cat has a great idea. Good. <laughs> Here's four episodes. Will you do a prequel? Yeah. And so when you get a Nebula Award winning author providing a show, I, th I think we're on to something good here. What's that? A, a Brian Stitches? Sure. A, a limited <laughs> series. Al Pacino is, is, is the Stitches. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> and when I was mentioning earlier about HBO needs to do something different, this might be the thing I'm thinking of. Stop me if you've heard something like this before, but Bloomberg is reporting that Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat are all negotiating with Fox for rights to stream highlights packages from the World Cup next year. I don't know what that means to the little guy like me. Uh, well, to the little guy like you, it means uh, nothing because you hate soccer. Well, I don't know. Well, I, don't, I don't hate you don't soccer. Care. You don't care Ma hey, soccer. man, I'm, I'm I not going to be I out caught... there looking for highlight reels of soccer. No, so this is not for you. Or Brian Brushwood uh, on his I... crusade against the beautiful game. Hang on. <laughs> I caught Vuvuzela fever just like everyone else did. Yeah, but <laughs> you didn't go look up highlights to see the great kicks. This is not about you. This is about the many people who do. And I think what's significant is Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat – are falling all over each other to give Fox money because Fox locked down the rights to this. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, all these deals right now about uh, games and highlight reels and highlight packages are all auditions, both to partner with companies like Fox in the future or to go directly to the leagues going forward to bid for these directly. Uh, everybody wants to prove to these notoriously risk-averse uh, leagues that have to make deals and then live with them for years and years that they are competent companies that have the money now but have the reputation that they won't be uh, they won't embarrass them going forward Hulu getting into a little bit of Amazon Prime space a little bit of PlayStation View space they've got Hulu TV now and now you can add HBO and Cinemax as add-ons for $15 for HBO $10 for Cinemax subscribers get live East and West Coast feeds of HBO, as well as on-demand access, and you can use your Hulu login 
to access HBO now. You will, however, need the new Hulu app. That's the one where you can access Hulu TV uh, in order to access your HBO and Cinemax live streams. That app is only available so far on Apple TV, Xbox One, Android, and iOS. Uh, meanwhile, a, a QVC and HSN are merging in a deal to be worth $2.1 billion. QVC already owned a 38% stake in HSN. Uh, that's Home Shopping Network and QVC. What did QVC stand for? The Quietly Quality Value Voicing Convenience Channel you know, okay. of America. Uh, like a quick video... Uh, I mean, th this has quite to be vital consumers. Th this this <laughs> has to be an indication. Filing. Uh, this has to be an ind indication to me. It seems obvious that this is an ind indication that the original value proposition was to reach people at home for convenient shopping, and it, this has to be a testimonial to the fact that just uh, Amazon Prime, including yeah. Prime Day tomorrow, is crushing it. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, yeah, really. I mean, a consolidation lot of, time. of television networks and the capitulation of, of home television shopping. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look at that horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back to your emails in our dispatches from the front. This is you. You're on the front. When you dispatch things to us. Uh, so last week, someone wrote in and said they, they were uh, mildly put off by the fact that often on Spoiler in Time, I will say it's episode five of season three when it is it is easier and more pertinent and a better label to say season three, episode five. And we talked about that. We got several emails, uh, one of which said, hey, uh, really messes up your metadata if you don't do this right. And the standard is S episode number e i'm sorry s season number a e episode number two uh, digit, and you really two should digit, do that two digit that, season number two digit episode number yeah so season zero seven s zero seven e one two for example another person said that they actually work at a post-production facility and that the general convention is to label any episode with the name of the series the season number the episode or sometimes production number and the episode title. It's also pretty common that a season number and episode number will be consolidated into one single identifier. For example, I might use 307 to refer to season three, episode seven. That's actually the convention we use on the spoiler in time show notes, 307. Neither one of these are responding to what we were talking about, which was me saying it on the show, which is different. Like, yes, you need to have a consistent way of labeling it, so that you can find it on the internet. But that's not what we were talking about. Well, I I would imagine that there's a reason that you see about 50-50 uh, on that naming convention. I mean, uh, during those days, uh, do you remember in the early 2000s, there were services that would clean up all the ID3 tags of your MP3 files because you'd have 75 different things labeled Pink Floyd dot zero dot bleep blop bloop and, and in different orders? Sure. Sure, um, but this has nothing to do with what the person was criticizing me for. Okay, well, uh, uh, yes, but the mere fact that I don't want to talk about that part either indicates <laughs> that this is an interesting question. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, listen, you, you pointed it out. There are two ways of doing it. One was popularized by torrents, and it was a language of the Internet to quantify it. That's what the Internet settled on. And then there was what people do in Hollywood, right? Or, or people who produce the shows. And the shows are very often, that's usually what you'll see critics use, is like 101 or yep. 102 or 305, something like that. Uh, <laughs> but, again, and, but again. That's that. Yes, that's not was, what the guy, the guy was, was criticizing you criticizing on. me for saying, you're saying children of the sun. It's more efficient and a proper label to call them sun children. Okay, look, Tom, nobody's denying that you are the subject of this. <laughs> oh, also, all right. we're all more interested in this question than the one that he was upset with. By the way, Tom, yes, that is indeed not a windmill. It's a giant, and you should tilt at it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to make it clear... <laughs> That we should probably move on to the next email. <laughs> yeah, um, people, what we you got, got? We got an email from Dan that says, Hello there, Brian, Tom, and Bryce, and I assume we meant Justin as well. Just wanted to say that last night's show was great, and the explanation you made about the Televisa Cable Vision versus Roku deal was the best I've seen or read so far. Here in Mexico, Televisa has had a bad rep since they're sort of the official spokes channel of the government, and they pretty much own most of the over-the-air TV channels. The court case against Roku was 
la- was seen as a last ditch effort for Televisa since they had been struggling to capture young audiences for their digital with their digital content offering. However, that's just a reflection of the general dislike with them since uh, Blim, their version of Netflix, actually owns about 17% of the online streaming services, which is actually quite good if we compare with TV streaming services from other TV channels, even in the U.S. So far, the banning, quote-unquote, of Roku is limited. Only Office Depot and Radio Shack, yes, we still have those around, stop selling Roku devices. You can still get it pretty much anywhere and everywhere else from Amazon to Best Buy to Mercado Libre to the corner electronics store. Uh, the court case continues and the focus is in stopping piracy, not the device. Uh, yeah, yeah, as you mentioned, that content is available to, on the test channels. Once again, great job on the show. I was particularly glad to see this topic correctly commented by an impartial observer. Mm. Makes me proud of being a Patreon. Well, thank you so much, boss. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is Dan. Gracias, thank you Dan. much. Absolutely. All right. Uh, finally, Christopher Harris, publisher of World Soccer Talk, wrote in and said, hey, guys. Hey, Brian, I, I heard you were talking mess. <laughs> I'm here for soccer to back wow, that was quick. you down. <laughs> I'm going to kick a colazo right in your butt. <laughs> I completely disagree with you about NBC's launch of their soccer product that charges $50 per season to watch the games that aren't on TV. The way I see it, it's a move by NBC Sports to try to stem the flow of people to cord cutting than it is their offering of a new product. In order to have access to all of the games from the Premier League, NBC's new paid product now forces soccer fans to continue to pay for a TV subscription plus pay $50 for the streaming service to watch the games not on TV. There were two alternatives last season for cord cutters where you could stream every single Premier League game in the U.S. with a subscription to PlayStation View or DirecTV Now. But with the launch of NBC's new product, that access to all of the games has been taken away for next season. Cord cutters can still stream the games that are on TV, but they have to pay the $50 extra to NBC to get the games that aren't televised. NBC Sports screwed up on the launch of this service. Many soccer fans would have gladly paid to be able to access all of the matches without requiring a TV subscription. As it is now, NBC has delivered a new product that doesn't satisfy the cord cutters or the TV subscribers. Uh, I'm sorry that I don't like soccer. Well, I mean, what he's saying is... It, we. <laughs> What he's trying to say is that by by taking these games away from NBC logins, it hurts cord cutters who have PlayStation View and DirecTV now, but it doesn't hurt them any worse than it hurts traditional cable subscribers. So I, I still feel like it's the same all over. And I think his final point is absolutely right. This hurts television subscribers and cord cutters both. Uh, yeah, I, it sounds like it's over. Uh, it's it, it has an uh, inflated price tag, and if you are not able to get uh, games that are currently streaming on television, which is a tremendous frustration, specifically if you root for a team that is very often featured, uh, then then it is very often half a product. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, so but it's fifty bucks a month or 50 well, bucks yeah, for that this? basically you used to be able whether you are Comcast or PlayStation View right you used to be able to log into the NBC app and see the games that weren't on television now they charge you $50 to do that and they don't require you to be a subscriber to any of the other stuff for for the season yeah mm, i mean come on man 50 bucks I mean, I just added 50 bucks to the price, basically. That's what they did come on hey, that's like, it, uh, i mean like dude all, all the other sports are 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 I think like uh, the NFL is like seventy bucks for three months or something like that, and and hockey is super expensive, baseball is super expensive. They I mean, are going to gouge it. you. Yeah, I don't see anyone going back to traditional cable from PlayStation or View, PlayStation View, because they have to pay fifty dollars extra for the rest of these games. Because they still have to pay fifty dollars extra for the rest of these games, no matter what they do. Those were getting to know you, Prices. That's <laughs> right. Hey, uh, you know what is uh, getting to know you, Price? Getting to know actionnewsgame.com and giving a price to your Kickstarter backing. Uh, yeah, folks. Uh, go ahead and check it out. If you have the contender, uh, there's a great opportunity for you guys to buy uh, that as well as uh, uh, get a crossover expansion, which is super awesome. Yeah, go yeah, check go- it out. Thank you, Justin Robert Young. Uh, thank you, everybody who supports us at patreon.com slash cordkillers. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. And we're live on diamondclub.tv Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We will see you there. 
Hey guys, Tom and Brian here. We just wanted to say thank you to all of our $5 patrons who keep us loud, live, and independent. You guys make Court Killers the production that it is. Your name appears in the video credits and appears in our hearts. And if you'd like to become one of them or see who they are, you can go to patreon.com slash court killers. You'll need to do more than just go there though. You'll have to sign up and you know pledge an amount. But Unless you just want to see who they are. Well, I mean, you can gawk. That's a little creepy, isn't it? If you want to be a gawker, let's go. Up to you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>